Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Bishop Jackie McCullough coming to you again for the 53rd time about Christ in the crisis. Now, somebody might say, Christ in the crisis? We're not in the crisis. Yes, we are. I'm sadly to say we're still in a pandemic. Sadly to say that we are, you know, we are not out of the woods, so to speak. And so many other things are happening, you know, that we didn't expect to happen. We think by now, many of us thought, or many of you thought you would be back to normal. But I'm glad that we're still together. I'm glad that we're still worshiping God and trusting God. And even those of you who are not believers, if you're listening to this exhortation, I certainly hope it will bring some kind of comfort and peace to your heart. So today I'd like to talk about pouring your heart out or pouring out your heart or emptying your heart. We need our hearts to be emptied. It has accumulated sadness, sorrow, disappointment, anxiety, frustration, discouragement. So where do you go when all of that piles up in your heart? Because your heart is, a, is like a container, just like it physically holds so many things to keep us alive. It also affects us emotionally and spiritually. So this pandemic is moving towards the two year mark very quickly. It is still time, a time of great uncertainty and anxiety. Children are going back into the schools and it is too soon to know exactly what will happen to them. Vaccines are being mandated on many fronts. And at the same time, the numbers of people contracting the disease is spiking. The change of weather brings in weather disasters, which has affected the lives of so many people across the world. When will this end is the cry of our hearts. Well, where is God? Is God hearing us? Is God attending to our cries? You may say he's doing nothing. He's not responding. Believer, please turn to him the more and make your cry stronger and louder. It's very clear from this psalm that this occasion is probably about David, um, that who was running from his son Absalom, his favorite son, his handsome son. But his son has turned against him. And it's a, it's a lot that, that's involved in this story, which I'm not going to spend time to talk about. But you should read about it, you know, in the scriptures. Where, where David and Absalom had a conflict and his son was very angry with him. And, and because he was angry with him, he stole the kingdom, at least half of the kingdom from him. David, who was the king, who had a great army, who had a great worship, um, 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 worshipers, people who were worshiping the Lord before the Ark of the Covenant. He had a palace. He was really a great king, a great ruler, and he brought great influence and attention to the children of God. But now he's running like a fugitive, not from a stranger, from his own son. He's being disgraced by his own son. So David was running for, for his life and feeling totally separated, not just from his throne, not just from his reign, not just from his power but from a particular place, Mount Zion. In Mount Zion was the Ark of the Covenant where the Shekinah, it intimates the nearness of God, the presence of God. And that's where David went to worship. And also all of the singers and the, and the Levites and the musicians, they worship. It was a place where worship went on, where praise went on, where God's presence was felt near, where people felt the, the goodness of God, where people felt the healing power of God. You know how that is, just like many of us have not been in a church building. And if we have gone back, it's not the same as when we gathered and we sang together and we prayed together and we got ministered to and we felt the nearness of God. Now, somebody says, well, you know, God is not in the building. It is true. 
God is not in the building. God is in our hearts. But when we come together, if everybody's heart comes together in one building, singing the same song, talking about the same Lord, oh my God, you can't minimize that kind of presence. You can't, you can't undermine the, 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 the presence and, the, and, the, and the, the strength that is gained when all these hearts come together. So here's what I'm, you know, here's what I want you to think about. Because about now, we're, we're still very antsy. We're very weary. You know, I, I just talked to a friend who lost 15 members of her family. 15 members. Not all of them died from COVID, but some of them did. But all at one time, people are still dying. People are still sick. People are still going through. So this is not a time of peace and calm. It's still a time of upheaval. It's still a time of despair. But here's the admonition. Here's the exhortation for you so that you won't panic. The first thing the psalmist said in Psalm 68 and, and 62 and 8, trust in him at all times. Ye people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. So let's just look at that first clause. Trust in him at all times, ye people. And he's talking about his people who have had a relationship with him, his people who believe in him, his people who know that he's able, that he's a very present God, that he's all powerful, that he's almighty, that he is a God that is consistent. So here, trust in him. If you know him like that, don't give up your trust. Everything around you is saying give up. Everything around you is saying things have not changed and we, we, we're, we're going through and nothing is happening. And, and, and a lot of people are saying a lot of things. Even your own heart might be saying it. But trust in him. And what does trust mean? It means to be confident, be secure, to hope in him. And David was saying, I know what it is to be in, 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 a, in a tumultuous time, a time of turbulence, when his own son turned against him and some of the people that he, was, he reigned over joined Absalom and turned against him. He was a very horrible time and he's running away like a fugitive. And so he discovered that if you trust in the Lord, he'll bring you out. So this is, this is a psalm of encouragement, what David is saying, because he brought me out, because I had confidence in him, because I believe in him, he brought me out. And I'm telling you, if you do the same, no matter what you're into, no matter what we're into, God will bring us out. You know, many of us perhaps struggle with, with the fact that, you know, times are not, not always good. Maybe when you got saved, they told you that when you get saved, everything will be fine. Maybe somewhere along the way, somebody taught you that if something went wrong, that either you're sinning or, or you're not believing God. No, no, no. Well, that means all the believers in the world right now are sinning and not believing God because we're all in COVID. Something is wrong with that teaching. What it's saying is there are times when trouble will come to the point that it challenges your faith. And this is a time when our faith is being challenged greatly. And David is saying, I know I've been there. And you also know that the Lord is trustworthy. So trust in the Lord, not just sometimes, not just when we, we're having a good time or when things are going well, but at what? At all times, in every situation and in every season. So Isaiah 26 and 4 says, trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord is the rock eternal. Job 13 and 15 says, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. But I will maintain mine own ways before him. First Samuel 30 and 6 says, David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in his spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord his God. So you're going to gain strength. So trust is confidence. Trust is confident with expectancy. I'm believing you because I know you're going to work it out to your glory and for my benefit. 
That's not a cliche, ladies and gentlemen. That's the word of God. That's God talking to us, no matter where we are or what we're going through. So trust in the Lord. That's the first thing David is saying. Trust in the Lord, all ye people. The second thing is pour out your heart before him. Now, when, when you trust someone, you will, you will tell them your secret. You will tell them your heart. Unfortunately, we have poured out our hearts to many people that, who were irresponsible. We told them our deepest secrets. We told them our failures and our faults. We told them something that we didn't want everybody to know. And they revealed it. Or they took it another way. Or they judged you. Or they, 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 they betrayed you. So, so we know what it is to pour out our hearts because somebody's pouring out their heart right now and maybe to the wrong person. But here, you only pour out your heart to the person that you trust because you know they can handle it. Now, you pour out your heart to someone and they may be, may be able to handle it, but they can't change it. They can't fix it. So we pour out our hearts because we need to get it out. We need to vent. We want, we want counsel. But nobody can fix this but God. So even if you're pouring out your heart to somebody else, bring your heart back. Bring it on back and take it to the right place. Pouring here means to what? Empty. It means to spill. It's like pouring out water out of a glass. It means to give your complaint, to make your complaint Known, it means to gush out. It, it 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 literally means my heart is so heavy, and I'm so I'm so burdened down that I can't even talk about this quietly. I I'm, I just want to pour it out and gush it out. It's about to choke me. It's about to suffocate me. I can't handle it. Where do you take it? To take it to somebody who is having the same problem, to take it to somebody who doesn't know anything about God is to cause frustration and disappointment because they can't fix it. They can't change it. Psalm 42 and four says, I pour out my soul in me. The idea is that the soul is grieved. The soul is weak. The soul is overpowered. The soul is being tender before God. Pouring out means that you're being vulnerable. Pouring out is vulnerability, and you don't want to be vulnerable to everybody. But pour out your, your, your heart's desire to the Lord. It suggests that there's danger around, there's trouble around, there's a situation that's out of control, there's a threat of death and the threat of destruction. So you take it to God who can help you, who can protect you, who can deliver you, who can fix the problem. Empty your heart today. Even if you, you know, when, 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 when people are going through grief, most of us, most of us, we cry. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day and they were talking about losing a loved one and they just kept on sobbing and sobbing and crying. And I just sat there and listened to them. You know why? They were pouring out their grief. You can't keep that inside of you. That will suffocate you. That will kill you. That will affect you physically. It will affect your blood pressure. It will affect your sugar level. It will affect your mind and your attitude. It will cause you to either be depressed, withdrawn, or it will cause you to really uh, um, express anger. That stuff was never meant for you to keep it in. It was meant for you to pour it out and come to him. Come to him as a, as, as a father, as a good father, as a good parent, and don't hold back anything. And you don't have to talk fancy. You don't have to say, oh, thou God of heaven that sits on the circle of the earth, whatever. You can talk to him out of your heart. And your heart might be angry. You may have an angry heart. You may have a disappointed heart. You, you, you may have a frustrated heart. You may have a confused heart, but pour it out. Pour out your confusion. He's not afraid. Pour out your, your disillusionment. Pour out your hurt and your pain. Talk to him freely. 
This is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm thinking. This is what's driving me crazy. This is where the pain is. If you're in touch with that, if you're in touch with your heart, empty it. Go to God and empty your heart to him. First Samuel 1 and 15. Here's a perfect example. We know Hannah lived a very miserable life. She wanted to have a child, couldn't have a child, and she was provoked. And in those days, in the Bible days, when you didn't have children, you were looked, you were looked at as, as, as a barren person. You were looked as a person with looked at with scorn. And she had somebody, Penina, who kept on harassing her and laughing at her and teasing her. So she was a woman that was going through. But you know what she did? She didn't even pour out her heart to her husband. Her husband couldn't help her. And he said to her, I really want to help you. I, I, I'll, I'll, give you I'll give you extra portion. I'll treat you extra special if you will just not if you'll just not have this kind of heavy heart, I want to take away your heavy heart. And she told him, you know, in, in her own way, you can't help me. But where did she go? Let's follow Hannah and see how she handled her heavy heart. Her heart of sorrow and shame and disappointment and frustration and fear. Where did she go? She went and prayed. And here it is in 1 Samuel 1 and 15. And Hannah answered and said, no, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. Because she was praying and she was so heavy. She wasn't even making any noise. Her heart was so heavy. She couldn't even make a sound. And the priest thought that she was drunk. She says, no, I'm sorrowful. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. And when she got through emptying herself, the Lord told her through the priest, Eli, go home. Next year, this time, you will have a son. And we know that Samuel was born. Listen, this is the only way to get through this. Learning to pour out our heart. Don't hold it in. Don't withdraw from God. Go to him and spend time emptying your heart before him. Psalm 102 and 1 says, hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry for help come to you. Verse 2 says, do not hide your face from me when I'm in distress. Turn your ear to me when I call. Answer me quickly. That's, that's, that's again the psalmist talking to the Lord. Look, look how he's talking to the Lord. God, hear me. Don't, don't, don't ignore me. Don't, don't withhold from me. Come close to me and give me an answer because I'm in trouble. I'm in distress. He's talking real talk. Psalm 142 and 1 says, I cry aloud to the Lord. I lift up my voice to the Lord for mercy. I pour out my complaint. I want you to see the imagery of pouring out. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. What would happen to us if we didn't have a place to go and pour out? And many of us have poured out, but we poured out to the wrong person at the wrong time. We had bursts of anger, bursts of, you, you, you know, of having a fit. That wasn't pouring out. Pouring out is emptying all that you feel in the presence of the Lord. Philippians 4 and 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Present your request to God and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Here it is. How, how, do, how, do, you, how do you keep your mind? How do you keep your mind from snapping? How do you keep your mind from becoming clogged or breaking apart by coming to the Lord? making your request. That's another way of pouring out your petition, telling him your complaint and giving it to the Lord in prayer, in the privacy of your home, in your prayer closet, at your bedside, in the bathroom, in the car, taking a walk, but pour it out. Don't hold it in. And why do you pour it out? It says right there, but God is a refuge for us. How many times 
We have given information to someone and it was secret, it was sacred, it was intimate, it was personal, and we heard it again. It wasn't a safe place. It wasn't a safe person. But when you pour out your deepest, deepest sorrow, it could be a failure, it could be sin, it could be faults, it could be an act of indiscretion, it could be a, wrong, a, a bad decision, it could just be distress or despair. When you pour it out to God, the scripture says, he is a refuge for us. And the word refuge means shelter. It means he's, we can trust him. It's safe. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. He's safe. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. He is safe. He will not put your business on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. He will not put you out there. I don't care what it is. If it gets out there, it's because you put it out there. But you can pour it out to the Lord in the privacy of your home, somewhere private where you can pour out and tell him things that you can't tell anybody else. This COVID will pressure you and squeeze you and cause you to think and feel so many ways. Pour it out to the Lord because he is safe. He is our rock. He is our strength. He is our tower. He is our buckler. He is our protection. He is our citadel. He is our security. It literally means that in times of danger, we know where to run. And when my heart is overwhelmed, Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been what? A shelter for me and a strong tower from mine enemy. So listen, find him as your refuge. You know, and, and you don't have to be in a certain place. You don't have to be in a certain place for you to feel safe. In the midst of all that's going on, you mean you can feel safe? Yes. There can be a rest, a comfort a sense of security and protection. Why? Because you poured out your heart to the Lord. Psalm 18 and two, the Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He's my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call to the Lord. I will pour out to the Lord. I will empty my heart to the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. It's a promise. It's a promise. Proverbs 14 and 26. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence and his children shall have a place of refuge. Where do you feel safe in the midst of all of this? Where, is the, where, where do you run to when you want to feel safe? When you want to feel as if you can make it? When you want to feel protected? Where do you, come on, believer, where do you run? If you stop praying, where are you running? If you stop reading your Bible, where's the protection? Where's the safety? Nothing around us is safe anymore. Nothing is secure. One day you can have a house and the next day it can be in underwater. Everything around us suggests temporary. Everything around us suggests it is fleeting. It is here today and gone today. So where do you go and find permanence? Where do you go and find security? In the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run it there in and is safe. Meaning we find refuge in him in his name, in his word, in his leading, in his guidance, we can lean on him. What have I to fear? What have I to dread? Leaning on the everlasting arm. So trust in the Lord, ye people. Pour out your heart to him. 
Stop carrying it. It will destroy you. It will cause you to break down or it'll cause you to withdraw or it'll cause you to pull away from God. And he is the only one that can help us in this season, in this time, in the midst of all of this. So I'm encouraging you, stop what you're doing right now and start boring. I don't know what time frame this exhortation will hit you. It may hit you in the morning. It may hit you at night. It may hit you in the daytime. But stop what you're doing right now and start pouring. Pour out your complaint. Pour out your discouragement. Pour out the pain. And not just the pain of today, but the old pain. The pain that you have never given him. The anger that you have never released the frustration that you have nursed, pour it out because he is our refuge. That means it's safe. Not only is it safe, he can do something about it. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy. We thank you because you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Remember my brothers and sisters all over the world, Wherever they can, whoever hears this exhortation, God, let this word become real to them. Let this word inspire them. Let this word guide them. Let this word rescue them. Let this word open them up to you the more. Let this word bring them closer to you. Let this word help them to empty themselves. You said that when we come and hunger, and thirst after you, we shall be filled. Lord, when they empty themselves, fill them with your presence. Fill them with your comfort. Fill them with your word. Fill them with your promise. And let them know that it's a safe place. In Jesus' name, amen.